Welcome back everyone. As you can see, after our project last time to make a few changes to the courtyard here, I went ahead and made some even more drastic changes. I prettified things a little bit. Oh, and of course it starts raining the moment I start recording. It's okay. So, I added some uh, decorative features to our bedroom, bookshelves, and a record rack holding all of our records. I haven't added a jukebox or anything to play the records with, but yeah, we've got records at least. As you can see, I added some paths around the base. I may yet change these major ones here to be a different block type under them. Um, you know, marble or some sort of stone path. I'm not entirely sure I like the entire courtyard just being this sort of rubbly path. You can see I also set up all of our machines in the form of a little fountain. It's not, I guess, a fountain yet. It's a little pool. Eventually I'll probably have, like, liquid trickling down, but for the time being it's got a little pool and we've got our solar panels here, which are powering our ME system. I managed to fit everything, <coughs> excuse me, I managed to fit everything into the ME system, all of our storage, and I made quite a few disks uh, or storage units, storage drives, that's what they are, to do that. I also rearranged our Ender I.O. room a little bit so that it uses a solar panel up on the ceiling or up on the roof there. I, I got really tired of shoving coal or fences or whatever into the Sterling generator. But now everything is powered and I also made an extra octatic capacitor so each one of these, the grinder or the sag mill and the alloy smelter, have one. These guys go really fast with the capacitors in them. Really fast. So this is a really good system. It's actually, I'm considering using this for most of our ore processing in our final build. I'm also not sure if you guys saw this. I finished up our Tinker's Construct room. I haven't put any lava in the tank yet. I I haven't actually used the smeltery. I just wanted to have it so I could move these blocks somewhere useful. <laughs> but this room is done. I moved our cobble generator over here or not our cobble, our uh, stone brick generator. We'll still need it uh, because we're still going to be building a lot of different rooms. And I guess I lied when I said all of our storage got moved into the ME system. We've still got these barrels for mass storage. Eventually we'll, we'll hook them up some way too. I've got two major projects that I want to work on today. Well, one major project, one minor project. Uh, one of the systems implemented in more recent versions of Ars Magica is this infused experience on armor. So every piece of armor that you wear gains experience as you do. 
this experience can then be spent on infusion of the armor. And hmm. Oh yeah, armor XP infusion. Well, goodness, I can't find the list of infusions at the moment. It must be somewhere here. Okay. Well, I'm not going to bore you over much with searching for it, but basically we can give all of our armor additional properties, like enchants, but they can be actually very powerful. So, what I want to make is the armor infusion table, uh, armor imbuement table, that is. But to do that, we need this pure essence. Pure essence is made in an essence refiner. You'll recall that block in the background there is an essence refiner. We made it a while ago when we were just putting machines in our Ars Magica room. But you'll notice that all these items around the side here are also kind of strange items that you might not have seen before. And each one of these is also made in the essence refiner with various other ingredients. And so these ones on top and bottom are themselves made of four other things that need to be made in the essence refiner. It's a big long chain of items that are being slowly distilled down to one, but I've completed the chain except for the final piece that I thought you might like to see me begin. Okay, so that I've come to learn when it flashes like that means there is not enough power, I think. So let's take a look at that. Okay, it's got power. Oh. Okay. Well, whether there was enough power or not, it did manage to take care of it. So, we now have our pure essence. I've also been repairing our force mitts. That means that if we come over to our ME system, we can make our imbuement table. First, we will need two crafting altars, and for that we'll need Vintium. The one disadvantage of the sag mill is I don't believe it can grind Vintium. Yeah. So we are only getting the reduced rate of Vintium dust per ore that you get from putting it directly into a furnace. It's too bad, but as I've said many times, soon enough we will be rolling in resources. So I'm not overly concerned about that. Okay, the one thing we need now is carpet, for which we will need wool. Oh, really? That's really going to be what keeps me... Oh, no, okay. Maybe I can do this, or do they need to be the same color? Okay, they need to be the same color. That is really what's going to prevent us from doing this right now. And oh, here are my shears. I just happen to know that there are some sheep over here, though, who wouldn't mind donating a little wool.
awesome. So now we have our carpet. Oh, come on. Great. Armor imbuement table. I know nothing about this table. The only thing I know about it is that it exists and it will give us awesome enchants. So these guys are in line here. The first one is one away. So, whoa. Wow. Okay. Put our helmet in here. Looks like maybe we can choose various enchants. Give me just a minute to find in the book how this works and figure it out, and then I will come back to show you what I do. Okay kind of bad news. Apparently you can't apply any of these uh, infusions or imbuements, I forget what they're called again, until the armor reaches level 30. None of our gear is quite that high yet, but there are some pretty cool things that this can do once we reach that, so we will have to keep an eye on our armor, and when it hits level 30 we can come back and Imbue it? Yes, sorry, imbue. In the meantime, we should get working on project number two. So, over here, we have a way to quickly and efficiently make ourselves a great deal of stone. Stone is one of the things we will need a lot of to build out our base. But there's one other thing, and I am staring down at it right now. Wood. Specifically spruce wood. And I don't much like the idea of chopping down all the trees in the area. So I've cleared some space here in the agricultural district. This is going to be where we do actually most of our planting of all sorts of crops. And to start that, I have made for us two very handy blocks from Mine Factory Reloaded. We have the MFR Harvester which will harvest any grown plants in front of it, and the planter, which will, unsurprisingly, plant said plants. So, let's figure out where we want to put these to begin with. I'm thinking right in the middle of everything. I'll eyeball it in this direction. We need the sky to be open. So why don't we do this? Seems like a good enough place. Now, the issue is both of these will need power and we'll need some access to our applied energistic system. So what we will need to do is run cable. If I remember correctly, the floor is three thick. So this is the first underground level for our basement. 
this is where we will begin digging. Now I'm going to show you a nifty trick using the morph mod. If we turn into a small creature like a bat, we actually get small and we can... ooh! I thought we could fit in one by one spaces. Let's try this jungle spider. That's even smaller. Huh. Maybe a tiny little slime. Well, that's too bad. I wonder if this doesn't unlock until we unlock abilities. That's a shame. I thought this was actually changing our size which would mean that we would not be suffocating in this block when we walked forward. But that's not the case. So, we'll just have to see. It, it sort of is working, in that we can walk, we're not being hindered, but we're still taking damage, which is, like, too bad. I was really hoping we could just dig this one by one. We might be able to if we sprint. Okay, here's what we're going to do. There we are. So, as you can see here, oh, okay. Let's. Okay. Change back. But save this form so that we can more easily. Oh, giggle came back. more easily transform. Uh, as you can see, I made a couple changes to our basement, and by a couple I mean I added some stairs, <laughs> though I haven't added the floor yet because we don't have enough wood, and I started to run some cable. Aha! This is something that I have done a couple times now, <laughs> which is rescue people from Mistcraft ages. Uh, if you enter a Mistcraft age and you do not have a linking book back to the overworld, you can't get back, <laughs> which is, you know, problematic if you want to actually ever return. So what I have had to do is go into these ages and rescue people by bringing back, uh, or by bringing them a linking book. So here's how we do it. In the ink mixer, we get a link panel. We make a linking book that will bring us right back here. Make sure we bring a book stand so that the book will be permanent. If 
if we can ever find wood in this spawn cabin. Ugh. Okay. And then we go into whatever age they are in. And we return a book to them. And then they're free. <laughs> so a word of advice to all of those of you who are watching this video, always bring an extra link book. Just keep it in your inventory. I haven't been doing any mistcraft work, so I don't have one. But you know what? That's advice enough for me. Just that, that was enough. I'm making one right now so that I'm always prepared. I don't need any more hint that it can happen than that. Okay, so I've got my ink file, I've got my piece of leather. I'll take a brief detour back to spawn cabin because, of course, I haven't made a mistcraft room yet. Make ourselves a link panel. And I'm actually going to want this book to bring us here to the nexus. There. Now we have a book. If we ever find ourselves in a mistcraft age and don't think we can get out, we can pull that book out and get ourselves home. Okay, but we were in the middle of running some conduit. So I have started this, I ran it over to the wall here. You can see that this is the Ender IO conduit where we've got both power, the green, and ME conduit, which is the blue, running in the same block, which is pretty great. But now we will need to run it the rest of the way. Hmm. This isn't that far, so let's see if we can do it. Cool. done it. Oh, and we can even fit past it. Good to know, although nearly deadly. Let's run it up one more block. Okay, this is actually where we are going to put our harvester, or sorry, our planter. So, we actually don't want our ME conduit here. It is going to come up here, and then we're going to put an export bus, which is the way we send items out of our ME system. We're going to send it, put that right here. The power, though, is going to come up here. And that way, 
That way we can power our harvester, uh, planter. Meanwhile, if the planter is there, it's going to plant in a 3x3 three three area until we upgrade it, then it will go more than that. Meaning at this block, facing in, we will put our harvester. And the harvester will also need power. And it will also need ME capability. Oof. Which unfortunately me need, means we're going to need some more cable. Give me a minute. I will go make more cable. Okay guys, I finally got enough cable set up. Let me show you what I've done. So I cleared out a little area here to run the cable. I realized I would want to access these machines, so our little one wide corridor got expanded a bit. So if we look here, in cross section, we can see that the planter is actually one below the ground, like so. I have it hooked up to power, so it's getting that. And here I have an export bus. An export bus will export an item into an inventory that it's pointed at. In this case, I have it exporting spruce saplings into the planter. I've then run power and uh, inventory up to the harvester. Let's take a look at that. The harvester is on the level above the ground, and it is pointing at the trees. By default, just like the planter, it's going to search a 3x3 three three area. If it sees any trees or crops that have grown, it will harvest them. When it does so, it will dump automatically all of its inventory behind it. And so I've placed an interface here. ME interfaces will automatically take any items pumped into them and send them into our network. So if we repair these couple holes here I was using just as a guide and grab some bone meal. What I'm hoping we'll see That bodes poorly. Oh, of course. We're now draining our ME system, or our power, with not just our ME system, but also with the harvester and the planter. But, as you can see, it works. And as those trees grow, we will get their wood and the saplings back. The saplings will be emptied back into the planter. And then... Oh, good. For a brief time, while the sun is high, we are actually gaining power. And then all night we'll lose it, but... That's okay. So, that is set now to get us 
a nigh infinite amount of uh, wood which we can use to expand our building. The other thing we can use it for is building this next floor down here. And for that task I have specifically built the machines that we are going to use already. So let me just grab some of this spruce wood. And I know we're hitting the wrapping up point, but I just want to show you how I plan on filling in that hole. Or not a hole, but that floor. Over here at our extra solar panel that's powering our ore processing machines, I put an extra energy cell. So it is now full. And we can use it down here to make our room. So I think this is the level that we need the floor. And we will just need to dig out a little bit of space here. Okay, so you'll remember we have previously used landmarks from BuildCraft. What I showed you was that when you added a redstone current to them, okay, I'm turning on hover mode so that we can keep careful track of the level we're at. Uh, anyway, I showed you that when you add a redstone signal to them, they will send out beams that you can use to visualize where you're building things. Similarly, if you put them into any cuboid shape, and then right-click on one, it will outline the shape you have made. If you then put a BuildCraft machine, like for example a filler next to them, it'll pop off the landmarks But you will end up with a box that represents where it is the filler is going to place its items. So in this case we want it to fill the area it has selected with spruce wood planks. And we'll need one more thing. We're going to tell this to output. And we'll use this energy conduit to convert the power source. And as you see, our filler is using up the spruce in its inventory and filling in the floor there. Now if we do that, it will stop drawing power, which it will draw as long as it is given it. So what we would like to do is get all the spruce we can. And between this episode and next, I am going to 
supply this filler with everything it needs to fill in the floor here. So we will have our basement level. This is where we are going to put our next major project, which is going to be a big reactors generator, which will hopefully get us enough power to power everything. Right now, that solar is barely keeping up during the day. If it rains or turns to night, it's going to very quickly drain our energy cells and we are going to be left unable to access any of our items in the ME system and unable to power any of the rest of our base. Well, that's going to do it for me this time. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I'll see you next time. Bye.